Joints of the body. In this video we will discuss about functional, regional and structural classification of the joints, close pack and loose pack positions of joints, and clinical anatomy. Joint is a junction between two or more bones or cartilages. It is a device to permit movements. However, some joints are movable, which are primarily meant for growth and may allow molding during childbirth. Classification of joints Functional classification According to the degree of mobility, joints are classified into three types. The movable joints, also known as synarthrosis. Slightly movable joints, also known as amphiarthrosis and freely movable joints, also known as diarthrosis. Synarthrosis are fixed joints and shows no movement or mobility. Examples includes sutures of skull bone. Amphiarthrosis show slight degree of mobility. In these joints, a pad of cartilage lies between the joints, which act as shock absorber. Examples include Intervertebral joint between the bodies of the vertebrae. Diarthrosis are freely movable joints. These joints have a fluid filled cavity between articular surfaces, which contains synovial fluid. This fluid acts as a lubricant. Classification according to number of articulating bones. According to the number of articulating bones, Joints are classified into three types, including simple joint, in which only two bones articulates with each other, for example, interphalangeal joints, compound joints, in which more than two bones articulate within one capsule, for example, elbow joint or wrist joint, and complex joints in which joint cavity is divided by an intraarticular disc, for example, temporomandibular joint and stenoclavicular joint. Regional Classification According to regional classification, joints are classified into three types. Vertebral type, which are slightly movable joints. Skull type, which are movable joints and limb type, which are freely movable joints. Structural classification It is based on the type of connective tissue and presence or absence of the joint cavity. According to structural classification, joints are classified into three types, including fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints, and synovial joints. Fibrous joints in these joints, bones are connected by fibrous connective tissue. Fibrous joints have no joint cavity. And these are either immovable or permit a slight degree of movement. The fibrous joints are further classified into three types, including sutures, syndesmosis, and gomphosis. Sutures the articular surfaces of sutures are connected by thin layer of connective tissue, known as sutural ligament. Sutures are present only in skull, and are immovable. The sutures are of five types, according to the margins of the articulating bones. Plain suture, in which the articular surfaces are plain and fairly smooth. For example, internasal suture. Serrate or limbus suture in which articular surfaces are interlocked reciprocally, in a jigsaw fashion. For example, interparietal suture. Denticulate suture, in which margins are interlocked with each other, like teeth of a saw. For example, lambdoid suture. Squamous suture. The articulating surfaces of squamous sutures are relatively flat and overlap with each other. For example, temporoparietal suture. Fifth one is shindilysis. It is a special type of suture in which a ridge of one bone fits into the groove of the other bone. Syndesmosis. 
These are special joints, where bones are connected by interosseous ligament. For example, interosseous radioulna joints, inferior tibiofibular joint. Gomphosis, also known as peg and socket joint. These are specialized fibrous joints involved in fixation of teeth in alveolar sockets of mandible and maxilla. Cartilaginous joints. In cartilaginous joints the bones are united by cartilage. These joints lack joint cavity. The cartilaginous joints are of two types. Primary cartilaginous joints, also known as synchondrosis, and secondary cartilaginous joints, or fibrocartilaginous joints. In primary cartilaginous joints, bones are united by a plate of hyaline cartilage, so that the joint is immovable and strong. These joints are temporary in nature, because after a certain age the cartilaginous plate is replaced by bone. Examples include, joint between epiphysis and diaphysis of a growing long bone, sphenoaccipital joint, first chondrostinal joint and costochondral joints. Secondary cartilaginous joints are covered by a thin layer of hyaline cartilage and united by a disc of fibrocartilage. These joints are permanent and persist throughout life. Examples include symphysis pubis, intervertebral disc, manubriostinal joints. Synovial joints. These are most evolved and therefore most mobile type of joints. Characteristics of synovial joints. The joint surfaces are covered with articular cartilage. Articular cartilage is avascular, non-nervous and elastic in nature. Between the articular surfaces there is a joint cavity filled with synovial fluid. The joint is surrounded by an articular capsule, which is made up of a fibrous capsule, lined by synovial membrane. Fibrous capsule stabilizes the joint in such a way, that it permits movements but resists dislocation. The synovial membrane produces synovial fluid, to keep the surfaces lubricated. Synovial fluid is like egg white. Classification of synovial joints. According to shape of articular surfaces, synovial joints are classified into seven types. Plain synovial joints. Their articular surfaces are nearly flat. They permit gliding movements in different directions. Examples include intercarpal joints, intertarsal joints, superior tibiofibular joints, interchondral joints, tarsometatarsal joints and many others. Hinge joints. Articular surfaces of hinge joints are pulley shaped. There are strong collateral ligaments. In these joints movements are permitted in one plane only. Examples include elbow joint, ankle joint, and interphalangeal joints. Pivot joints. In pivot joints, movements are permitted in one plane around a vertical axis. Examples include superior and inferior radio ulna joints and median atlant axial joint. Condylar joints. Articular surfaces include two distinct condyles. These joints permit movements mainly in one plane around a transverse axis, but partly in another plane around a vertical axis. Examples include knee joint and temporomandibular joints. Ellipsoid joints. Articular surfaces of ellipsoid joints include an oval, convex surface fitting into an elliptical, concave surface. Free movements are permitted around both the axes. Examples include wrist joint, metacarpophalangeal joints, and atlantic occipital joints. Saddle joints. In saddle joints, movements are similar to those permitted in ellipsoid joint, with addition of some rotation around a third axis. Examples include first carpometacarpal joint, stenoclavicular joint, calcaneocuboid joint, and others. Ball and socket joints. Articular surfaces of ball and socket joints include a globular head, fitting into a cup-shaped socket. 
Movements occur around an indefinite number of axes, which have one common center. Examples include shoulder joint, hip joint, talocalcaneo navicular joint, and others. Movements of synovial joints. Active movements. Three types of synovial movements occur at synovial joints gliding movement, angular movement, and circular movement. Gliding movement occurs in plane joints where one bone slips over the other bone in particular direction. Angular movements, these movements increases or decreases the joint angles produced by the articulated bones. Four types of angular movements are flexion, extension, abduction and adduction. Circular movements are possible only if the round articular surfaces of one bone articulate with the corresponding cup-shaped articular surface of other bone. Example of circular movements are circumduction, supination and pronation. Bones, ligaments and muscles play an important role in maintaining the stability of synovial joints. Positions of the joint Close packed position. When the joint surfaces become completely congruent, their area of contact is maximal and they are tightly compressed. In this position, fibrous capsule and ligaments are maximally spiralized and tense. No further movement is possible and surfaces cannot be separated by disruptive forces. For example, close packed position of temporomandibular joint is clenched teeth, extension at spine. Abduction and lateral rotation at shoulder, and close back position of elbow is extension. Loose back position. The position in which articular surfaces are incongruent is called as loose back position. The joint space is freely mobile in this position. For example, loose back position of hip and knee joint is semi flexion. Clinical anatomy. Disc prolapse. If the nucleus pulposus part of the intervertebral disc gets protruded backwards, it may press the spinal nerves leaving the intervertebral foramina. The condition is known as herniation of the disc or disc prolapse. Sciatica. If disc prolapse occurs in lumbar or sacral region, there is radiating pain in the lower limb. Due to nerve compression, this condition is called as sciatica. Rheumatoid arthritis. It is an inflammatory systemic disease involving the synovial membrane of small joints, especially hands. Due to chronic inflammatory process, the deformity of the fingers occurs. Osteoarthritis. It is a degenerative condition of the large weight bearing joints. The articular cartilage wears out, degenerates, and there is formation of peripheral osteophytes. The patient feels lots of pain due to rubbing of the bones together during movements of the joints. Spondylosis. The degenerative changes may also occur in the spine, leading to narrowed intervertebral foramen, causing pressure on the spinal nerves, which may cause radiating pain in arms and legs and also leads to cervical or lumbar radiculopathy. Meniscal injury. The meniscus is a C-shaped piece of tough, rubbery cartilage that acts as a shock absorber between the shin bone and the thigh bone. It can be torn if you suddenly twist your knee while bearing weight on it. A torn meniscus is one of the most common knee injuries. Neuropathic joint. It is the result of complete denervation of joint, so that all reflexes are eliminated, and the joint is left unprotected and liable to mechanical damage. The neuropathic joint shows painless swelling, excessive mobility and bony destruction. It is commonly caused by leprosy, tabes dorsalis and syringomyelia. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button, and press the bell icon.